Let's talk about how we can get more out of our Black & Decker Grasshog GH3000. The first thing I'd like to point out is always read, understand, and apply all the operational and safety instructions in your manual. Me personally, I always wear some kind of eye safety. I love the uh, eye safety system glasses because they give me full protection. I had a darker one, a, a protective lens like you see in the back there that got hit by a piece of debris from the trimmer. And I wish I kept it because it was scratched. It really gave me some good protection. So make sure you wear good eye protection. This trimmer has a tendency to be a little noisy. If you're concerned about hearing, make sure you wear ear protection. I had to, on one time when I was uh, using the edger, I had to use the yellow cord that you see on the right because the one on the left, the orange one, was under use at the time. And I got to tell you, there was at least a 15 to 20 percent difference in terms of power. This is a very old cord and doesn't have a lot of uh, bandwidth in terms of power. Um, so make sure you have the right extension cord. This extension cord's at least a 16 gauge. You should probably get down to a 12 gauge to take advantage of the full power of this, um, this trimmer. The GH3000 comes with some uh, very convenient cord management. So what you can do is you can slide your extension cord up through that slot that you see right there, loop it around that little hook, and then wring it back out, and then plug it into the unit itself. This keeps it from becoming unplugged and helps you to manage your cord much more effectively. You're probably wondering why I'm showing you a shot of the bottom of my lawnmower. Well, here's why. If you take a close look at the blade on the bottom of any lawnmower, you're going to notice the cutting edge is only about two inches. It's the last two inches of the blade. The rest of the blade really isn't designed for cutting or chopping at all. So I want you to keep that in mind while you're using your trimmer. Why? Because it's really only the last inch of your trimmer line that you should really be cutting with. So when you're wading into a group of grass or weeds, you want to wade into it such that it's the last one inch that's doing the cutting. If you just set it down on top of it, you're going to find that this part of it's moving so slow it doesn't cut real well. So ease your trimmer into the grass or the weeds that you're cutting and allow that first one inch, maybe two inches at the most, do the cutting for you. Another thing to remember is every time you get done using your trimmer, you need to go into this area and make sure that you clean it out. Because if this gets clogged up with uh, grass and weeds and mud or dirt or whatever else you have in there, then it's going to make this line move less effective, slower, and you're probably going to consume more line and it's going to be heavier. So make sure you examine this and clean it out if, if necessary after each use. Let's look at uh, trimmer line. Some years ago I purchased some trimmer line for my old Toro line trimmer and I kept this out in the garage. I didn't keep it moist and of course in uh, Texas heat it got really really dry and it also became brittle and I didn't take the uh, spool out of the trimmer head either. That became brittle. I was having to pull out the uh, spool, advance it further all the time because line kept breaking off inside. So what I learned was you need to get take your trimmer line that you're using and put it in, in some container that's going to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out and it doesn't become brittle. Also you need to keep it indoors so it has less exposure to heat. I just happen to have this spool of weed eater line. Let me zoom in for the uh, so you can get the SKU number off that. This is 100 and looks like 150 feet. I keep it in this plastic bag. You might have a better container you can put it in. I also take out my spool each time and you can see it's still wet here because I just took it out of the container. Um, I keep it in the container and I keep it all in the laundry room until I need it and then I put it back into the trimmer head. I'm not going to go into how, how to reload your spool or to load it into the trimmer head because um, there's so many videos that do, do a very good job of that. But I do want to point out, make sure that the trimmer line is kept tight, tightly wound. 
on your spool and while you're inserting it into the trimmer head. Um, also make sure that you get these gears, these gears right here if you can see them, the way that's notched, those notches set up so it does snap into place here. Once you hear it snap into place you're okay and make sure you keep that line tightly wound while you put it back into the trimmer head. The handle on your grass hog is adjustable. All you have to do is come on this left side of the body, press here, and then you can adjust it to multiple angles until it pops into place. So depending on how tall you are, how high the work is, that, or how high the grass is that you're cutting, you can adjust this handle to a height that's more convenient for you. Another adjustment that you have on your trimmer comes right here. This allows you to control the length of the shaft going back into the body of the upper part of the trimmer. So all you have to do is unlatch this, and you can slide this in or out to a length that's comfortable for you. So between this and adjusting the handle, you're most likely to find a very comfortable position for your trimming. So that locks it back into place. When you're ready to do edging, all you have to do is flip this open. Remember, this only rotates in one direction. Turn it up like this until you hear it pop into place. Throw that latch back, and now what you have on your edger is you've got the handle set up conveniently so you have this set up for edging on your sidewalk or along your driveway or wherever you want to edge and it rolls right along and it works really really well and that's one of the things I like about this trimmer is I don't have to buy an edger this is truly an edger and a trimmer this trimmer has a very very powerful motor and I found sometimes when it does an auto line feed, it'll have a tendency to pull or what I call nose dive. And what do I mean by that? It'll tend to grab a lot more grass or weeds that I'm trimming and tend to pull in a direction that I don't want. So if you're trimming around a garden that has a nice uh, metal or wood border, you need to go slowly. Or if you're trimming around some flowers that you don't want to have damaged or delicate, you need to go slow and make sure you've got good control of the trimmer because it is very powerful and it'll have a tendency to uh, move in a way you're not going to expect. Well, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please press like. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And before I go, and remind you to take your spool out and store it in water along with your other backup line. Of course, always read, understand, and apply the operational and safety instructions in your manual, and make sure you've got good eye and ear protection. And as always, good luck on your projects.